Peter Tilly, a charismatic and versatile indie actor who effortlessly brings characters to life on the big screen. With a passion for storytelling and dedication to his craft, he captivates audiences with his natural talent and undeniable presence. Hailing from a background in theatre, he has honed his skills through years of experience, delivering memorable performances that leave a lasting impact. Peter's ability to seamlessly transition between genres uh, showcases his ability and range, making him a sought after talent in the indie film sector. With a promising future ahead, Peter continues to push boundaries and explore new horizons in the indie film industry. His passion, creativity, and undeniable talent make him a rising star to watch out for. Welcome to this episode of Jibber Jabber, the vocal part of the networking magazine. Peter Tilly joins us today um, to follow up on his magazine feature. Peter, thank you so much for joining me today. Hello, no, thank you for inviting me on as a guest. It's great to be here and I'm, I'm really looking forward to chatting with you. Very welcome, very welcome. Well, your editorial was very popular with our audience both here and in Hollywood, so I wanted to get you on the show really to ask you some more questions. Some of our listeners have sent in the questions and others were designed by myself, so this will be interesting. Um, first question I have for you is, what, what was your first ever acting role and how did it shape your approach to acting? Yeah, so I suppose my first acting role really was a film I did called The House That Zombies Built, which I believe is being released later this year, actually, um, in Silent Studios, and they seem to typically do zombie films. Right, OK. Um, That's, it's, a, it's a popular genre, I know. Um, was it filmed here, location-wise? Yes, that was down in the South End. Uh, there's quite a few indie filmmakers within that area, actually. And that's where the Horror and Sea Film Festival takes place in South End as well. So it's quite a popular area. Right, OK. And, and who produced it? Was it was it an indie producer? Yeah, so as a team, uh, Jason Wright is a director and he works alongside his wife, um, Kirsty Richardson, and um, she's the producer on it. So they work together. So in your opinion, what separates a good indie film from a great one? I suppose it's the amount of, you know, anyone these days can sort of, you know, even pick up their smartphone and go out and sort of shoot a film, which is yeah. which is great. It's so easy accessible to do that these days. But I suppose it's typically what I found is within indie film, a lot of creativity and passion goes into this because Typically, some indie films are low budget. There's not a lot of money that goes into it. So you can see the, the originality come out and the, the creativity and passion. So I suppose it's the more you put into that, the better that indie film will be. Right. Because um, I know a lot, a lot of actors eventually have the dream or goal of producing their own movies. Um, is that one of yours? I mean, what is the top of the ladder for you? Yeah, so saying that actually, I've... I've taken a new step um, this summer. I'm working on my own film, which I've become a producer on, um, called The, the Foreboding. Um, yeah, I heard something about that. I was watching uh, something on Instagram about that. Tell me about that movie. What, what is it about? Yeah, so it's quite crazy, really. Um, I attended the Horror and Sea Film Festival in January, the start of this year. Okay. And so, my best mate of mine, Alex Taunton Hill, he's an incredibly talented writer and actor. And I went to him sort of the end of June um, saying, hey, do you want to make a short horror film? Uh, hoping to get a film made to submit it into horror and see the deadline of that being September. Again, coming to him at the end of June leaves a really short time span. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, pretty mental. Yeah. But we, we've managed to do it. It was four weeks of madness, um, getting the script together, doing the whole casting process, sorting out a location, getting the director on board and casting. So you, really, you really got a feel for uh, making movies. I mean, is this, is this a taste of, uh, of, uh, of the future for Peter Telly? Will it be more movies or more, more movies that you produce and make uh, or more movies that you star in? Yeah, very much. Uh, I mean, I'm, you know, I would never do a short time span of that again. <laughs> that was pretty mental. Definitely yeah. felt the stress of that one. But I mean, it was a really enjoyable process outside yeah. of that. And yeah. I believe there will be sort of an announcement on that coming out soon, like a mini documentary of the 
director announcement and a behind the scenes sort of material. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what? How can people? How can the audience um, find more information about that? Would is there a is there a particular website that you've got for that? Was it all on Instagram? Yeah, so I'm mainly promoting it on Instagram. Um, you can find that on my own social media Instagram account at right. T-I-L-L-E-Y dot Peter. And we've also set up its own account now as well. Um, right. So you, you can, f- there'll be, I'll be doing a lot of promotion on that one. Um, okay. So that's so- one to look out for. I mean, I'll, I'll make sure, well, send me the link and I'll put it in the podcast description box as well so that the viewers can then... Um, um, you know, follow you. That would be good. Um, so, as an indie actor, how do you select the roles that you want to play? I mean, what's the process? Do you are you getting picky, or do you take anything? I mean, I know the indie industry, as you said, isn't the best paid um, industry, and you know, sometimes you can get very lucky. How do you? What's the criteria for picking a role? Yeah, I mean, I've done. I've very much done it a different way to I suppose what most actors might go about it I sort of came into the indie world through Twitter and I got a lot of work through Twitter actually um, sort of two years ago just after we was coming up the pandemic Um, and I suppose I was just reaching out to indie filmmakers sort of supporting their work and really being supportive of that mainly because I really do enjoy indie film and the talent and creativity that goes into it and I was lucky enough for them to cast me in some of their productions. Just getting my foot into the door, really, um, putting myself out there just to gain experience. Right. Maybe more so now, I like to, I like to challenge myself as an actor. I've really built up my confidence and experience now, so I, I like to take on challenging roles. Right. Okay. And it's all about, I know it's character depth for you because I've, I've seen some of your work. And I know that, you know, it is about character depth. Let's let's talk about your fellow actors. I mean, who in the indie scene do you admire the most and, and would you love to work with given the opportunity? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been lucky enough to work with some really talented actors in the indie film scene. Someone like Chris Mills is a friend of mine and I've worked with him a couple of times now. Um, again, my, my friend Alex Staunton Hill, he's an incredible actor. Kamel Yildrim is another one. There's so many incredibly talented people within this industry and it's, it's quite a nice community here in the UK because we all sort of dive into each other's sets and yeah. films and work together. So it becomes sort of a, a family essentially in a way. Right, well, are you ready for the questions that are coming coming at you from the audience? Um, I've got to put them together. Um, here's the first one. If you could replace any actor in any movie with yourself, which movie and role would it be and why? I think I'm going to take that question, <laughs> put a slight spin on it. <laughs> okay. I, a, a dream role of mine would very much be Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Right. Okay. That is a dream role I would love to play. Um, so to even act alongside Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland would be absolutely amazing to be working alongside them three. That is just a character I very much admire and have loved since I was a young a young kid. I think we all have, haven't we? We've all dreamt of, the, of playing those parts. Have you ever been mistaken for another actor? I mean, your look is quite distinctive. You can, well, you can change your look, I know. But um, have you ever been mistaken for anyone else? That's quite funny, actually, because the one I seem to get most would actually be Andrew Garfield. Um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I was up London one time and someone actually mistook him for me um, yeah. thinking I was Andrew Garfield <laughs> which is not a bad one to get I'll it's not that. bad actually I was about to say it's not bad at all especially yeah. since he's an actor that I very much admire and he's one of my favourite actors as well so I'll yeah. take that okay what's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you on set I suppose something that comes to mind was when I was filming Towers in the Great War two years ago um, we had this amazing set on a farm and it was signed like the trenches in the World War. Oh cool. yeah, I saw a clip of that. Well, I saw a poster of you and, and it was in one of the trenches, so I saw that. 
Yeah, that was that was a really fun experience because、um, we done quite a lot of night shoots, and this was like silly hours in the morning, running around the trenches like absolute madmen,、um, with with a beer in hand, and it was actually real beer, so that was quite funny.、Uh, sort of just doing all these stunts in the trenches, and I couldn't see anything; it was pitch black. So that was a really enjoyable experience, actually. Well, you mentioned Twitter. This this question came in、uh, on a DM on Twitter. If you could only play one type of character for the rest of your career, what kind of character would you choose and why? Oh, see, I I love playing villains. I get so much fun out of playing the bad guy. I've I've been lucky to play a few villains now, and、mm. there's just so much you can go to with it. You can really have a lot of fun. So. <laughs> Typically, I actually quite seem to enjoy playing villains more than the good guys.、Um, <laughs> you, well, you never know. I've seen, I've seen it the other way round. The, the bad guys become the good guys, so it's it's quite you know it's quite twisty. You can, you can very much、it. so. Yeah.、Um, right. Well, this one's coming on Instagram on the DM. What's the most bizarre preparation you've ever done for a role? Yeah, this kind of links into previous question. Actually,、um, played a. A character called Sagittarius, which was a segment in Michael's Horoscopes Volume One、uh, film, and again, Sagittarius was an evil, an evil guy.、Um, yeah, quite, quite terrifying actually. So I had to put a lot of prep into that beforehand. Done, a, done a typical learning lines in my room, and he's got quite a few interesting lines in there. So I don't know what the neighbours thought, but、uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised the police wasn't called actually. But... Yeah, I'm surprised.、Um, okay, and if you ever had to, act, this one is one of mine. If you ever had to act in a film without getting to read the script first,、uh, would you do it? Would it be ad hoc, a bit like our podcast today? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do love a bit of improv.、Um, I've done quite a few films now where it has been improv, so it just follows like a basic structure. So there's not been any lines, but typically. I do like to tend to read the scripts and sort of see where the story goes and how the character develops and sort of what journey they're going on. Really, that's interesting because in, in the indie film sector, I know that a lot of the the actors kind of improv improvise a lot, and、um, sometimes the the ad hoc stuff works really well. They,、um, you know, they come off script and and they get the result. Has that ever happened to you, where you've come off script a little bit? Yeah, very much so. I mean, even filming the foreboding recently, we. There were some things that popped up completely improv, which wasn't in the script, and it worked out actually that much better. So sometimes you do get the best results out of improv. Actually,、um, I've worked with a production company called Trash Arts here in Portsmouth in the UK, and they do a lot of improv style. We made a film last year called Taped Up Memories, which is a, a found footage horror film, and it follows a family on like a road trip and. It documents their journey, and that was all completely improv. And we'd done rehearsal beforehand, and it just it flowed really well, actually. Yeah, can happen like that. Okay, this one has come in on a DM. This one is、uh, Twitter. Can you share a time when you forgot your lines during a scene, and how did you handle it? That's a bit related to the last question a little bit, but have you ever actually, you know, forgotten your lines? Yeah, I mean, I don't suppose you're an actor if you don't forget your lines. <laughs> But I've, I've been quite fortunate.、Um, it's only happened once, which was sort of at the beginning of my career. Again, it was on the house that zombies built, where that was my first big on-set experience, and I really went into the deep end because my character had—I I was playing a news reporter, and essentially it was a segment where I had a monologue. Right. So it was quite a long day because makeup needed to be done for the zombies and just、yeah. quite a few breaks. So I was doing really well, doing it in sections of this monologue, and it got to the end of the day, and my I just went blank. I think I must have been so tired,、um, and I forgot the last the last lines of that monologue. But、yeah. quick quickly picked it back up and, and got back on track and got back to it.、Yeah. So apart from that little blip, it's been pretty good. Brilliant. Okay, and what's the strangest prop you've ever had to work with in a film?、Um, <laughs> I'm not going to go into spoiler territory, but there was an interesting、um, little segment I'd done on Video Shop Tales of Terror 2 where we we had quite a few. 
costume changes quickly because we were sort of doing this fake trailer so we'd go into different segments and that was a lot of fun actually but we uh yeah my my friend is an actor and he took me into the the changing room where there was all costumes and props and he suggested to me put something on which was a very interesting suit which you will see on screen when that film releases but yes quite embarrassing but you do anything for the arts when you're I'll make sure I share it I'll make sure I share it Peter (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure it will be all over online yeah okay well have you ever had a role where you've had to learn a weird skill or habit I know that you know, a lot of, um, I've, I've recently interviewed an actor in the States and, and he, you know, had to learn how to handle a, a weapon. He did weapons training and that sort of thing. What about you? Have you had to learn a weird skill or any skills in particular um, or kind of fall into character where there's a habit, like a stammer or a stutter? Yeah, I mean, something that was quite interesting and fun to do, actually, which I've never really done before, was um, there was a fight scene within the foreboding and my friend Alex Norton Hill was stunt trained, so we choreographed this fight scene and played that out, and there's quite a bit to it. Right. So going through it... Is it difficult people... to do? Is it difficult to do fight scenes? Or is it... it looks so simple, but I guess it's quite complicated. Yeah, very much so. I mean, this, especially when there's quite a bit to it, you sort of run through it bit by bit. It's very much treating it like a dance, I suppose. You've yeah. got the whole choreography of doing it and um but i mean saying that it was it was a lot of fun to do i really did enjoy that actually okay okay this one's coming uh this one is from instagram if you could have any actor living or deceased to play you in a biopic um who would it who would you choose and why oh i don't know if i'm interested enough (laughs) (laughs) i I feel like just the top of my head, and I know that his name has come up quite a few times, but just purely because I admire him so much, I think he's incredibly talented, and the work I've seen that he's done, he can pretty much take on everything, would have to be Andrew Garfield. Really? Okay. All right. And um, this next question is one of mine. How do you handle the pressure and expectations of being an indie actor? I mean, I guess... Over the years, we've been drilled and drilled into believing that, you know, it's such a polished profession and everything else. But then you have got these huge indie productions that are coming through and new raw talent. But, you know, the expectation of these actors is becoming higher and higher um, to be more in line with mainstream. I mean, how do you cope with the pressure? Is it is it quite a pressurised environment or you kind of flow right into it? Yeah, I mean, I, I tend to just focus on my performance. I want to give the absolutely best performance that I can possibly give. So I think paying my attention and dedication to that and just rehearsing so much beforehand, absolutely getting it to perfection as I possibly can so that I'm absolutely ready to give that good performance on set um, is essential, really. Yeah. Especially when more so... You know, if you're if you are aiming big and sort of want to step up that ladder even more, everything is so important, really. Putting it into how that comes across on on screen. Brilliant. Well, look, that was a lot of fun. Um, uh, we got to cover quite, quite a few um, questions from from social media, which is brilliant. Um, I've got to get you back on the show um, with your, you know, as soon as you release um, foreboding. Um, that's how I say it, right? Foreboding. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'll get you back on the show, I think. Let's talk through it when it's released there. Uh, but thanks again for joining us and, and sharing your experiences with the audience. We're very much looking forward to hearing about the future projects um, that are coming up. In the meantime, thank you so much, Peter, for joining me today. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed chatting to you, so thank you for that. Brilliant. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. I hope that you can join me next time. Until then, bye for now.